First, let's look at this week's discussion questions. Question one. Gratiano says they lose the world and do buy it with much care. Do you agree why or why not? I think we talked about this one last week. Number two, Bassanio compares his pursuit of Portia to chasing one arrow with another. Do you think this comparison makes sense? Why or why not? Number three, Shylock calls the contract a merry sport, and sport here means like a joke. It's not serious. But Antonio takes him seriously, and Shylock agrees to the serious contract. If the contract ends up needing to be enforced, so like if Antonio can't pay back Shylock's money, and Shylock, therefore, is, according to the contract, has a right to one pound of Antonio's body. Who do you think should bear the most responsibility for deciding this uh, collateral, the like this contract? Who is more responsible? You guys don't quite say it. And why? Number four, if a suitor of Portia chooses the wrong casket, he is never to speak to lady afterward in way of marriage. Uh, so as we will learn later, the word casket here is coffin, guan cai. And uh, in order to win Portia's hand in marriage, the successful suitor must choose the right casket. If he chooses the wrong one, he is never to speak to lady afterward in the way of marriage. So not just Portia, any lady. So if a man chooses wrong, he is swearing that he will never marry anyone in his life. Why do you think Portia's father added this clause, this part of the condition for her marriage? Will it help choose a good husband? Why or why not? And number five, do you think Shylock is a good master to his servant? Why or why not? Okay, so uh, grab the people near you to form a group. Choose a question to discuss, and I will give you around 20 minutes and uh, I will walk around and, and join your discussion. Uh, uh, do you guys need one of these? I think we can have seven people so it's all or we should have six here and this we are on the so you can use this and then you five then we get the ball seven And then you are going to be the new stuff in there. Y'all in there, I want to see this. 
Okay. Uh, every group has given an answer. So uh, let's talk about these questions. First one, they lose the world that do buy it with much care. So uh, this is in the very beginning of the play when Antonio's friends are still thinking, why is he so sad? Uh, and Gratanio gives a possible reason that Antonio is worrying too much. And he says this. Uh, so one group of your classmates took this question and they agree. They agree that if you worry uh, too much in trying to buy the world, whatever that means, then it's the same as not getting the world at all. Now, according to this group, buying the world, it, it means chasing what you want in life. So if, for example, you want success or you want money or you want happiness, when you chase that goal, if you worry too much about it, if you have to spend too much effort and energy and, and time and resources to chase that goal, when you, if you finally get it, then it is worth much less than you took to get it. Another way to say this is, for example, if you're chasing happiness, but if you chase it, if you have to chase too hard, then by the time you get what you think will give you happiness, you're no longer happy. Or in terms of uh, like money, if you, if you're trying to chase money and you take too much energy and effort to get that money, by the time you get it, it isn't worth all of your effort. Uh, and this group of classmates uh, agrees. This makes sense. Okay, uh, do you have questions about the first question? Okay, question two. Nobody chose this question, so it's my question. Um, this is in the next part of scene one. Bassanio comes to Antonio to say, there's a beautiful woman in Belmont named Portia. I'm in love with her. I'm going to pursue her, uh, and I need money. And the reason he needs money is because he already spent his own money. So how does he convince Antonio to give him more money? Uh, using this metaphor, it's going to be here. Let's take a look, one, one, one. Here. In my school days, when I had lost one shaft, shaft here means arrow, it's the wooden part, the middle part of an arrow. When I had lost one shaft, I shot his fellow of the self-same flight, which means his fellow, his companion. So I shot another arrow. Of the self-same flight means in the same way, in the same direction. Right, the third line, the self-same way, Okay, so this is a question of language. The self-same flight means in the same way, fang fa. The self-same way means in the same direction, because way means road, dao lu. Uh, the self-same way with more advised watch. More advised watch, which means he watches more carefully. So the second arrow, he pays more attention. Why? to find the other fourth. So he shot one arrow, he doesn't know where it went. So he shoots another in the exact same way and pays attention to where it goes so that he can find the first arrow. Uh, and by adventuring both, I oft found both. So in conclusion, when I risked or shot two arrows, I often could find both arrows back. 
呃，哎，拜勒韦 ，arrow 是箭，哎，弓箭的箭。呃、uh, ，so oft means often。So using the same logic, he's saying, I already spent my own money, but if I spend more money, maybe I can win back all of it. And by winning back all of it, he means marrying Portia because Portia has money. So this question, do you think this comparison makes sense? Not really. I think uh, maybe at that time, uh, economics had not fully developed and we had not yet had the idea of the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy means if you have already spent a lot of money, but you still haven't gotten what you want. It's a bad idea to spend even more money. Instead, you should set a limit to how much you're willing to spend. But here, Basanio is saying, I already spent my own money, but if I spend your money, maybe I can get those back. Economically, that doesn't make sense. Uh, but in terms of love, uh, in, in terms of love, we often have the idea of risking it all, gu uh, zhu From that perspective, it makes more sense. Um, because if Masanio truly is in love, then what he wants to win back is not money, but the woman of his life. And if he truly is in love, then that woman will be worth uh, an infinite amount of money. No amount of money will be too expensive to win the love of his life. So the comparison itself is not very, uh, it doesn't match perfectly. But if, if we look at the context, then it does, we do understand what Basanio means. That Portia is worth uh, any amount of money to win. Okay, do you have questions about number two? All right, number three. Also, nobody chose this question, so it's still my question. Uh, so the idea is that uh, when Shylock says, uh, if you can't pay me back, you have to give up one pound of your flesh, he's joking. But Antonio thinks that he's serious and he signs the contract and Shylock agrees. So, like, this is a terrible contract. So who should we blame more? Let's take a look at this. One, three, one, four, four. Uh, this is page one, 191. Okay, so Antonio is here coming to Shylock to borrow money. Shylock hates Antonio because Antonio has kept on bullying him uh, because Antonio is Christian and Shylock is Jewish. Uh, so Antonio knows this. So here at line 133, he says, but lend it rather to thine enemy. So you don't have to think of me as a friend. You can think of me as an enemy, and you can still lend me money. Uh, lend in English is like if I borrow from you, then you lend to me. Jechu. Thine means your, your enemy. Two, if he break, if he breaks the contract, if he does not follow the contract, or if he defaults, Fan if he break, thou mayst with better face exact the penalty. So if you lend to your enemy and your enemy cannot pay you back, you will be an in you will be in an even better position to uh, follow the penalty. 
那个赔款条件。Thou mayst means you may. With better face here just means like with a、uh, better attitude, better position. You're more willing to exact the penalty. 做出那个赔款裁决。Uh, the use of the word "exact" as a verb, we still use that today in modern English. Exact a penalty, exact a cost, exact a, a fee or a tax. How should we translate this in Chinese? Uh, 索取赔款，索取费用 ，something like that. So Antonio says, even though I'm your enemy, you should still lend me money. Uh, and Shylock here says, what is this? Line one forty three. Go with me to a notary. 去找公证 Seal me there your single bond. Uh, which means, uh. Sign the guarantee. Sign the contract there in front of the notary. Seal means uh to 就是呃签封那个信封 or like uh to stamp your personal authority 盖章 something like that. Your single bond. Single bond here means your simple contract. No other conditions, and in a merry sport. So as a joke, if you repay me not on such a day, in such a place, such sum or sums as are expressed in the condition.、Uh, so here the word "such" means rule gan, was it more? So such a day, such a place, such sum. 某日某时，若干钱 ，or sums as are expressed in the condition. So whatever the contract says, if you can't do that, let the forfeit, the ya, was the pay one, be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh. So your penalty would be one pound of, off of your body to be cut off and taken. In what part of your body pleases me, and I get to choose where to cut off one pound from your body. So Sherlock is joking, but Antonio says, "Content in faith," which means I am content, which means I am satisfied, which means I agree.、Uh, in faith, it's just an oath. 就是像是很轻微的脏话。I'll seal to such a bond, so I will sign this contract, and say there is much kindness in the Jew, and I will thank you、uh, for lending me the money. So Shylock is joking, but Antonio says he'll do it. And Bassanio says, "No, don't do it. It's a bad idea." Antonio says, "Don't worry. I I will pay him back. This won't happen." Uh, and of course,、uh, you can guess what happens later.、Uh, and Shylock also cannot believe that Antonio would agree.、Uh, so here, this should be line one sixty two, one sixty one. Pray you, which means please, tell me this. If if he should break his day, so if he doesn't pay me back on that day, what should I gain by the exaction of the forfeiture? So if he can't pay me back and I get to cut off one pound from his body, how would that benefit me? Why would I want this? A pound of man's flesh taken from a man is not so estimable. It's not very valuable. Profitable neither, as flesh of muttons, beefs, or goats. So mutton is sheep, yeah, bro. Beef is cow, and goat is、uh, sanya. So he's saying, like, if if I get a pound of animal meat, it would be much more valuable than a pound of man's、uh, body. 
I say, to buy his favor, I extend this friendship. And so Shylock says that he is willing to lend money to Antonio to build a better relationship, but it's as a joke. If he will take it, so. Even though I'm joking, if he agrees, then I agree. Oh, he doesn't say it's a joke, right? He says, this is what I said. Uh, so if he will take it, I'll take it. If not, adieu. Adieu is German for goodbye. Why is he speaking German? Uh, this word has entered English for a long time. Adieu just means goodbye. And for my love, I pray you wrong me not. So if you really value my friendship, please don't uh, make me a liar. To wrong me, it means to offend me, to make me do something wrong. Uh, and in this case, he's thinking about the contract. So wrong me not means don't make me uh, break the contract. So like if you really can't pay me back, don't prevent me from exacting the penalty. And Antonio says, yes, Shylock, I will seal unto this bond. So I understand, I agree, let me sign the contract. The question is asking, Shylock is joking, but Antonio agrees and therefore Shylock agrees. So if Antonio cannot pay back the money, and Shylock gets to choose where to cut off one pound of Antonio's body. Uh, and Antonio therefore dies. Who should we blame more? Shylock or Antonio? And why? This is, uh, I think this is an interesting question because most readers think that Shylock is supposed to be the antagonist of Pai Zhao so anything bad that happens should be blamed on Shylock. And it's true. He is the last person to agree to the contract. If he takes it back, then nothing bad would happen. But the first person to agree to the contract is Antonio. Shylock is joking. He says it, right? He says, a merry sport. He says, I'm joking. But Antonio takes it seriously. Why? Is it maybe because Antonio uh, can't imagine that Shylock would be joking? It doesn't fit with his understanding of Shylock's character. We'll talk about Shylock's character later in question five. But if Antonio thinks that Shylock is just a serious money man, he doesn't uh, have a sense of humor, Maybe that's a sign that Antonio doesn't think of Shylock as fully human. So this is the same thing as saying Antonio agrees to the joking contract because he doesn't think Shylock is human enough to have a sense of humor. And so he must be serious. So if anything bad happens, we can also blame Antonio for not taking Shylock as a full human being. So, I mean, at the end of the day, both of them sh should be blamed. Uh, but depending on your perspective, maybe one person is more to blame. Is it Antonio who doesn't acknowledge Shylock's humanity? Or is it Shylock who takes the opportunity to get revenge on Antonio? Let's take a 10 minute break.
Okay, let's continue. Question four. Uh, one group chose this question. So we know that whoever wants to marry Portia doesn't, uh, they can't just ask Portia to marry him, or marry him, I should say, uh, because Portia's father has uh, mandated that the successful suitor must choose the right casket. And in fact, Portia cannot deny someone who chooses the right casket. She can't choose either way. It's entirely up to this game or this riddle. Um, so why do you think Portia's father added this? And do you think it will help choose a good husband for her? Why, why not? Let's take a look at this part first. This is still on page 191. It says in the stage directions, flourish of cornets. A cornet is like a small trumpet, blah, blah. And it's a sound uh, that announces royalty. So here, enter the Prince of Morocco. So in the past, when a country was ruled by a king or a queen, that king is the country. There is no difference. So here, the Prince of Morocco is simply called Morocco. So the country name refers to the ruler's name, in this case, a prince. And it says that he is a tawny moor. What does that mean? Do you guys know what a tawny moor means? It means he's black as a hater. So his first line, mislike me not for my complexion. Complexion means skin color. Don't dislike me simply because of the color of my skin. So this tells us that he has had to deal with a lot of discrimination because he's black. Uh, so he shows up, he's the first suitor. He's the first man who wants to marry Portia. Uh, so on the next page, line 13, Portia's response. In terms of choice, I am not solely led by nice direction of a maiden's eye. So you, uh, you cannot tell what my choice is simply by looking at where or how I look. Like maybe if I look at you like I'm in love with you, that does not mean that I will marry you. If I look at you like I hate you, that does not mean I will refuse you. In terms of choice, that is not my sole uh, standard. Maiden here means unmarried woman. It actually means virgin, true. But in those days, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. So the meaning is the same, unmarried woman. Besides, the lottery of my destiny bars me the right of voluntary choosing. So my fate prevents me, bar means prevent, in modern English also, prevents me from being able to, to choose by myself. Uh, so... Like the, the, the successful suitor has to uh, choose the right casket. And then here uh, later, this is line 40, 40, 39, Portia explains the consequence of uh, choosing wrong. She says, you must take your chance and either not attempt to choose at all or swear before you choose, if you choose wrong, never to speak to lady afterward in way of marriage. Therefore, be advised. You must. So be advised means you must know this. Today, we use this in uh, formal English. Be advised. So you should know. So Portia says, 
you must choose, uh, you must make a determination before you choose. Either don't choose, don't try to answer the riddle, or first swear, Asin, if you choose the wrong one, you will never marry a woman in your life. So the question here is asking, why do you think Portia's father added this consequence? Like, that's a pretty serious consequence, right? Marry no woman in your life? Die single? Um, so uh, the group that chose this question thinks that this is to make sure that the man is serious, that he really cares about Portia. He's not just here for fun, right, or because he's bored, but he really wants to marry her. In English, we say that it raises the stakes. He got that job. Now, the second part of the question, will it help choose a good husband? Why or why not? Um, and this group says it will. They think it will lead to choosing a good husband for two reasons. One, uh, they have to, the, the man has to make the right choice. And we see later in the play that the three caskets are gold, silver, and bronze, three different kinds of metal, jing, ying, tol. Uh, and because Portia is very rich, this group says that uh, in this way, um, the successful suitor will be the person who chooses bronze, the least valuable. And that symbolizes that this man does not care about Portia's money. He's there to choose Portia as a woman and wife. Uh, and that would lead to a better marriage than if the man simply wanted her money. The second reason is because it's such a serious riddle. The consequences are so serious that the man who chooses correctly will be more invested in the marriage. It's like trial by fire, uh, right? If you pass through, you will value what you get much more. So even a man who may not have been uh, a good husband after choosing right may turn into a better husband, according to this group. Okay, do you have questions about question three or four? Okay, let's move on to question five. This was today's most popular question. I think maybe because it's the shortest question. Um, but short is not always easier. This is a question that asks you to look at more evidence. The question, do you think Shylock is a good master? Why or why not? All the groups think, no, he's not a good master. Let's take a look at this part. Act 2, scene 5. One ninety-five. So, enter Shylock the Jew and Lancelot, his man that was, the clown. So his man that was means Lancelot used to be Shylock's man, used to be Shylock's servant. Uh, but now he's a clown, Chou so in this play, he's supposed to be funny. Well, not necessarily. The clown has different roles in Shakespeare's plays. Yes, he's supposed to be funnier. He's supposed to be less serious. But often the clown is the person who speaks truth to power. Because he's a clown, nobody takes him seriously, nobody thinks that he's a danger, so he has more leeway to say what is true. Uh, okay, so Shylock begins this scene thinking about 
Bassanio and lending money. But then at the end of line two, you see this break, Poza Hall. And this is uh, this editor's way of telling us that Sherlock's attention has been drawn elsewhere. Uh, here, what Jessica, what does not mean sama? What is like an interjection? <clears throat> Jessica, uh, he's calling his daughter. What Jessica, like come here. And he, and then his attention goes back to Antonio and Bassanio. He calls her again, thinks back. And then finally he keeps calling, uh, why Jessica, I say, like he's really angry. He's really calling for her. And Lancelot makes a joke. Why Jessica, like he helps. Shylock call her. But Jessica is Shylock's daughter, not Lancelot's daughter. So Lancelot does not really have the right to call Jessica. So Shylock turns on Lancelot and says, who bids thee call? Who says that you should call her? I do not bid thee call, not me. And Lancelot says, your worship, which means like you, right, as a term of respect. Your worship was wont to tell me I could do nothing without bidding. You often said to me in the past, was wont to means you were in the habit of, you often told me that I could do nothing without bidding means uh, you said that I was not active enough. I only followed orders. I did not do anything unless you told me. In Chinese, you would say, But Lancelot turns this into a joke, right? Bidding can mean order, or it can mean, uh, like here, calling. So when Lancelot says, you said I could do nothing without bidding, he means, on one hand, uh, you often criticize me for not being an active servant. And on the other hand, you said that the only thing I could do was bid. So here I am, I'm calling Jessica, because it's the only thing you said that I could do. Jessica appears, enter Jessica. Call you, which means, did you call? What is your will? What do you want? Shylock. As he says, I'm invited to dinner. Supper means dinner. Uh, and he says, hey, blah, 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 but I will go anyway. And then this part, line 16. Jessica, my girl, look to my house, which means look after my house. Come on. Uh, and then he keeps talking to himself. This entire passage, only this part, is directed toward Jessica. Everything else, Shylock is talking to himself. Uh, Lancelot, I beseech you, sir, go. So, like, I, I advise you, I ask you to go to have dinner. My young master doth expect your reproach. So here, Lancelot is now working for Bassanio. So my young master is Bassanio. My master does, does means does, expect your reproach. So he expects you to come and criticize him. And this kind of tells us uh, Shylock's reputation. He's a big, mean guy. Shylock, so do I his. And I also expect him to criticize me. And here Shylock is talking about his contract with Antonio, which Bassanio uh, opposed. Um, let's jump down to line 29. Hear you me, Jessica, which means listen to me, Jessica. Lock up my doors. And when you hear the drum and the vile squealing of the wry-necked fife, so like if you hear sounds of a party, 
A fife is kind of like a flute, 有点像笛子的那个乐器 And he calls it the viol squealing. So he doesn't like this kind of music. But if you hear sounds of a party, clamber not you up to the casements then. 有点糟糕 It it, it this means do not go to the window. Clamber means like run toward. Uh, and then casement means window. So if you hear the sounds of a party, don't go to the window, nor thrust your head into the public street to gaze on Christian fools with varnished faces. Don't go to the window. Don't stick your head out to look at these Christian idiots with painted faces.、Um, so like as part of the party, it's a mask. That's a.、Uh, That's not true.、Uh, a mask is a kind of performance. It's not just dancing, but it's the, it's true. You the performers wear a mask. So that means true. So don't stick your head out. Don't look at these people with masks on their faces. But stop my house's ears. Here, but means only. So the only thing you should do. Is to stop my house's ears. I mean my casements. So by ears he means windows.、Uh, so why does he say ears? This is a joke from Shakespeare. It's kind of anti-Semitic. You know, you're saying, uh, 歧视犹太人的笑话 So the stereotype is that Jewish people have big noses and big ears. So when he says ears instead of windows, the audience is supposed to be reminded of the fact that Jewish people have bigger ears. And in fact, in some performances, the actor playing Shylock would put on bigger ears and a bigger nose to give that effect. So if he he says to his daughter, if you hear a party, don't look out. Close my windows. Let not the sound of shallow foppery enter my sober house. In Chinese, 别让轻浮的声音进入我严肃的房子 Right, this is a serious place. Don't let these frivolous party sounds enter my house. So,、um, in this section, Shylock's behavior is mostly talking to himself. When he talks to other people, for example, when he talks to to Jessica, is to order her to stay home and do nothing. Don't join the party. When he talks to Lancelot, it's to、uh, berate him, Mata. Right? Who bids thee call? I do not bid thee call. So,、uh, everyone who chose this question thinks this means Shylock is not a good master. In terms of Lancelot, Lancelot is Shylock's former servant. He now works for a Christian, and that already shows that、uh, Lancelot did not like being Shylock's servant. And from Shylock's behavior, we can kind of guess why. He doesn't really seem to respect. His、uh, servant, or even his daughter,、uh, he only gives orders, and、uh, if the orders are not followed, he then chastises his servant. Not someone you want to work for. And in terms of his daughter, he also doesn't care about her happiness or what she does. He only wants her to stay inside. It's like he's trying to control his daughter. Uh, and in fact, Jessica can't take it anymore either, because、uh, on page one ninety six, after Shylock tells Jessica to stay indoors, Lancelot says, "Aside to Jessica, aside means only this person can hear, only Jessica can hear. Mistress, which is the woman version of master, master mistress, look out at window for all this." 
So pay attention, look through the window, and wait for this. There will come a Christian by, will be worth a Jewish eye. So if you look out the window and pay attention, a Christian man will pass by who is worth looking at. A Jewess is the female version of Jew. So it's talking about Jessica. A man will come by that is, will be worth looking at. This is a very subtle way of saying a, a man will come to pursue you. Uh, you know, so something is going on behind Shylock's back. Jessica is not surprised at this news. So she probably already knows the man. Uh, and later in the play, we read that they elope. Uh, so here we have the image of a mean and uncaring master. And below him, the servant and his daughter are working together behind his back. Usually that's a bad thing, right? You're not supposed to go behind your master's back. But in this play, Shylock is the antagonist. So all of this stuff is presented as positive, especially because it is a Christian man. And as we keep saying in the society of that time, Christians are assumed to be better than Jewish people. Okay, do you have questions about number five? All right, uh, so for next week, please read up to, let's see, what is this? Please finish Act 3, but this time we'll count what. Now, um, last week I mentioned that the school wants us to make up class for October 9th. This one. So uh, we need to pick a time. And on that, at that time, we're going to watch uh, the movie version of the last play, The Tempest. I prepared three movies for this class, but we only have time to watch two. So we're going to watch the third one uh, during makeup week. So the question is, what time do you want? I'll give you some options. Tuesday afternoon, in and six periods. So we'll do it. This is option one. Option two. Wednesday um, afternoon, fifth and six periods. Option three. Friday morning. Third and fourth periods. That's the day. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about this. Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, or Friday morning. And if you can't make it to any of these, don't worry. I will post the film onto Moodle, and you can watch it at home. Okay, option one, Tuesday morning, raise your hand. Okay, option, sorry, no, Tuesday afternoon, I'm sorry. Tuesday afternoon, raise your hand. Still uh, two people, okay. Option two, Wednesday afternoon, raise your hand. Also two people. Okay, option three, Friday morning, raise your hand. Okay, so we're gonna do Friday morning. We're going to do uh, this, okay, 11 to 9, December 8th, Surrey Baha, Friday morning. Yes, December 8th. So, like just before we start talking about the Tempest, that way it'd be uh, easier for you to remember. I should write that down. Yes, sir.
Okay, so that's that. Do you have questions about what we have discussed today? Uh, if not, let's take a look at next week's reading. Uh, two, six, two, three. No okay. shit. Sure. Act two, scene six. Enter the masters, Graciano and Salerio. So the party has begun, and these two people are performing. Graciano, I believe, is a friend of Antonio, and Salerio is a friend of Bassanio. I think. Maybe I mix those two up. It's not important. Small people. Graciano. This is the penthouse under which Lorenzo desired us to make stand. So this is where Lorenzo said we should meet. So there we go. His hour is almost passed, so he's going to be late. And it is marvel he outdwells his hour, for lovers ever run before the clock. It's strange that he would be late. Because lovers are usually always only early. So Lorenzo is a lover. Who's the other person? We don't know yet. Like, who's the woman? So, like, lovers are usually only, are only uh, early, never late. Solerio. Oh, ten times faster Venus pigeons fly to seal love's bonds new made than they are wont to keep obliged faith unforfeited. So we have a comparison. Two things are being compared. Venus is pigeons. Venus is the goddess of love in Roman uh, <clears throat> religion, I guess. Roman legends. Venus, right, goddess of love. Same person as Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. The Romans just changed her name. So Venus's pigeons fly to seal love's bonds new made. Like to, it's comparing a relationship to a contract. When two people fall in love and they agree to meet, uh, they usually go so fast to, to certify their relationship, their new relationship compared to uh, people who must keep faith unforfeited, uh, unforfeited. So compared to duty, obliged means obliged, which means obligation, which means duty. So it's comparing two people who are in love versus two people who owe a duty to each other. They beat you, they're in. And it's saying lovers go 10 times faster than people who are, are simply uh, have a duty of responsibility to each other. Gratiano, that ever holds. Ever means always. So that is always true. Who rises from a feast with that keen appetite that he sits down? So is there anyone who is as hungry when he leaves a feast as when he first sits down. Uh, so feast, yin hui, keen appetite uh, means hungry. Where is the horse that doth untread again his tedious measures with the unbated fire that he did pace them first? So if a horse has to walk backwards, untread. Tread means step. So untread means to go backwards. So where's the horse that moving backwards in a tedious way, in a careful way, uh, it does so with the unbated fire, unrepressed passion and energy that he did pace them first. That pace here means walk. So the, the idea is, uh, no horse goes backward as fast and energetic as it goes forward. All things that are with more spirit chase it than enjoy. 
these three things, love, eating, riding a horse, are chased with more energy than they are enjoyed. So like when you chase it, it's more exciting than when you actually get it. How like a younger or a prodigal the scarfed bark puts from her native bay. Uh, hugged and embraced by the strumpet wind. This is a longer comparison, six lines. So the first comparison is these three, these three lines. It's talking about a small boat, a bark. So when a small boat puts from her native bay, leaves her home port, Nikai Gangho, uh, and is hugged and embraced by the crazy wind. Strumpet means like blowing here and there, uncontrolled wind then the boat is more like a younger or a prodigal, like a young person or someone who strays far from home. Uh, but when the boat comes back with over-weathered ribs and ragged sails, so the body of the boat has uh, withstood many different kinds of weather, and the sails uh, are ragged, so like not complete, uh, kind of kind of broken, kind of dirty. And the boat is lean, which means skinny. Ripped, which means broken in places. And beggared by the strumpet wind. Like turned into a beggar, which means the boat has no control. It can only beg the wind for mercy uh, to not destroy it. In that case, when the boat return, returns like this, how like the prodigal the boat is. So a prodigal is someone who strays far from home and then comes back. So like th these four, uh, these three metaphors are all talking about the pursuit of love versus the winning of love. They're saying like the pursuit always is more passionate and energetic. And they're talking about this because the two lovers are new lovers. So they should be full of energy. And yet Lorenzo is linked. Enter Lorenzo, Solerio. Here comes Lorenzo. More of this hereafter. More of this hereafter means let's talk about this later. Lorenzo, sweet friends. Your patience for my long abode, so thank you for waiting for me. Not I, but my affairs have made you wait. So I'm not late on purpose. I had other business that made me late. When you shall please to play the thieves for wives, I'll watch as long for you then. So if the situation is reversed, I will also wait as long for you. So what are they doing? They're playing the thieves for wives. They're stealing a wife. They're helping Lorenzo to win a wife, basically. Why is it stealing? We will discover this very soon. Approach, so come close. Here dwells my father Jew. Ah. Oh, which means hi. Who's within? Who's inside? Enter Jessica above in boy's clothes. So Jessica appears from the second floor outside like a window, and she's dressed like a boy. So Jessica is Lorenzo's lover. That's why he calls her father, my father, Jew. And that's why they are thieves, because Shylock would never agree to let Jessica marry a Christian. So they're going to help her escape. They are going to elope. Siben. Jessica, who are you? Tell me for more certainty. Albeit I'll swear that I do know your tongue. Tongue here means voice. So even though I, I can swear I know your voice, still tell me who you are to make sure. Albeit is even though. 
uh, in modern English, we would still use this word, albeit, even though. Lorenzo gives his name. Lorenzo and thy love. I am Lorenzo, I am your lover. Jessica, Lorenzo certain, like it is you, and my love indeed. For who love I so much? Okay, the subject of this sentence is who? Who do I love so much? Uh, so in other words, there's nobody else I love more than you. And now who knows but you, Lorenzo, whether I am yours. So you know that I love you. The only person who can decide whether we will be together is you. Like if you agree, I will be with you. But if you don't agree, like we cannot be together. Lorenzo, heaven and thy thoughts are witness that thou art. So before heaven and as you yourself think, you are mine. You, thou means you, art means are. So yes, I agree, we, we will be uh, run away together. Jessica, throwing down a casket. So she's throwing down a box. Here, catch this casket. It is worth the pains. Uh, pains here means effort. It's worth taking the effort to take this box with us. What do you think is inside? Jessica, daughter of Shylock, who is a money lender. So what could be inside the box? Maybe lots and lots of money. So she says it is worth the effort to bring this box. I am glad tis night, you do not look on me. So good thing it is at night so that you can't really see me. For I am much ashamed of my exchange. Here exchange just means uh, change of clothing. She has changed her women's clothing for a boy's clothing. And she says, I am much ashamed. But love is blind and lovers cannot see the pretty follies that themselves commit. Uh, because love is blind, lovers cannot see the stupid shit that they do. There, there's a they here, that they themselves commit. For if they could, if they could see what they're doing, Cupid himself would blush to see me thus transform it to a boy. And even Cupid, the little boy with the lover's arrows, even he would blush, Liantal Fan Hong, to see me dressed as a boy. It's a question of gender, Xing Bia Wen Also, notice that uh, Jessica calls the box a casket. This is the same word for the riddle that Portia's suitors have to answer correctly. So by using the same word, the play is setting up a comparison. Both of these are objects that appear during the pursuit of love. For Portia, the casket holds her fate. But for Jessica, her fate has, or she has decided her own fate and the casket is simply something that she brings with her. So there's a contrast here. Lorenzo, descend, for you must be my torchbearer. So he, he asked her to come down from the window. And he also asks her to hold his torch, the flaming stick, Woba. Jessica, what? Must I hold a candle to my shades? Like, I just told you, I don't want you to see me dressed in boy's clothing. And now you're telling me I have to hold the light? They, which means her shame, in themselves, good sooth, are too, too light. So, like, I'm already burning with shame. I don't need to hold a burning torch. 
good sooth just means uh, in sooth, uh, in faith, it's another mild oath. Why? Tis an office of discovery, love, and I should be obscured. And here means if. So if I am kept hidden, obscured, kept hidden, it would be a service, office means service, of discovery and love. So you would express your love to me by keeping me hidden. Lorenzo, so are you sweet. Sweet is like honey, Tianxing. Even in the lovely garnish of a boy. So even when you wear the clothing of a boy, uh, you are still sweet in my eyes. But come at once, like come quickly. For the close night doth play the runaway. Because the night will run away fast. So time is passing quickly. And we are stayed for at Bassanio's feast. So over there at Bassanio's party, they are waiting for us. We are stayed for. Jessica, I will make fast the doors. So I'm going to lock the doors. And gild myself with some more ducats and be with you straight. To gild myself with some more ducats. Ducats means money. Jing bi. Uh, it's the currency of Venice at the time. To gild myself. Gild means to, to add a layer of gold. So she's saying, I'm going to uh, bring more money and put it on myself, like in my pockets or in my clothing. And I'll be with you straight. Straight means straight away, which means right away. <clears throat> Exit above. Right. She's on the second floor, so she goes in, she leaves the stage. Gratiano, now by my hood, a gentle and no Jew. This is a joke. Gentle, of course, means kind and nice, but gentle is also a pun for, uh, for this word. Today, we usually say Gentile. A Gentile is somebody who is not a Jew. So here, uh, Gratiano is saying two things. Even though she's Jewish, she's very nice and very kind. The second thing, very soon, she will no longer be Jewish because she's going to marry you. Uh, and then Lorenzo goes on to praise Jessica. I think we can finish this, this column. Beshrew me, but I love her heartily. Beshrew me means, uh, it's also an oath. But I love her heartily. I love her with all my heart. For she is wise, if I can judge of her. If I, um, if I judge correctly, if I see her true character, she is wise. And fair she is, if that mine eyes be true. If my eyes do not lie to me, she is also beautiful. Fair means beautiful. And true she is, as she has proved herself. And she also has proved that she is faithful to me. Because she agreed to run away with me. And therefore, like herself, wise, fair, and true, shall she be placed in my constant soul. So since she is wise and beautiful and faithful, I will treat her that way in my soul. Constant just means always. Enter Jessica below. So she reappears on the first floor. What, art thou come? So you, you're ready? On, gentlemen, away. Away means let's go. Our masking mates by this time for us stay. So the other people at the party are waiting for us. Exit with Jessica and Solerio. Gratiano is about to follow them, but enter Antonio. So now it's Antonio and Gratiano. Antonio, who's there? Gratiano, Signor Antonio? Gratiano, uh, Antonio, 
Fie, fie, Gratiano. So he's like mildly cursing at him. Where are all the rest? Like, where's everybody else? Tis nine o'clock. Our friends all stay for you. No mask tonight. The party is canceled. The wind is come about. The wind has come. Uh, Bassanio presently will go aboard. Presently means very soon. So we're going to cancel the party because the wind has come in. And this is the chance for Bassanio to sail to Belmont to pursue Portia. I have sent 20 out to seek for you. So I've sent out 20 men to look for all of you. Gratiano, I'm glad on it. So I'm glad to hear it. I desire no more delight than to be under sail and gone tonight. So I want nothing more than to set sail with Bassanio tonight. Exit, which means everybody leaves the stage. Um, so we can see that instead of a party, they're going to send Bassanio to Belmont and let him pursue Portia. Okay, do you have questions about Act 2, Scene 6? Okay, so for next week, uh, read the rest up to the end of Act 3, and I'll uh, see you next week.